You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The Chicago Bears and Baltimore Ravens will likely employ similar strategies to disrupt the opposing quarterback. And it's going to fall on these two coaching staffs to figure out how to stay one step ahead and have the proper adjustments for really what these defensive coordinators are going to be dialing up for potentially a more aggressive game plan. This is Locked On Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm an analyst for Pro Football Focus, and I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter at Cox Sports One. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Lockdown Bears. You can like Lockdown Bears on Facebook. Join the Lockdown Bears Facebook group for even more Bears talk. Make sure that you're subscribed to the Locked On Bears YouTube channel to keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. Thanks for making Locked On Bears your first listen today and every day. On the show today, we put together a game plan. What the Chicago Bears need to do in order to upset the Ravens, get back in the win column, end this losing streak, and turn around this post bye week struggling streak as well. So we'll go through what this Ravens offense is going to want to do against the Bears and how this Bears defense may want to adjust and attack Lamar Jackson, try and slow down a dynamic playmaker at the quarterback position. Then we turn and see how they're going to try and get in Justin Fields' head and make things difficult on him and maybe some shades of the Browns game in terms of at least defensive game plan and how the Bears can avoid that level of offensive disaster. And then we'll wrap up with the the key matchups that I think are really going to decide this game in both directions. The places where the Bears have a big advantage that they need to take advantage of and the places that the Bears have a particular disadvantage that I would imagine the Baltimore Ravens will try and take advantage of. And we saw last week, while the Bears were on their bye week, the Ravens played the Miami Dolphins, and we saw the Dolphins find some ways to really disrupt what the Ravens wanted to do on offense. And we talked about this quite a bit on yesterday's show with our friend, Kevin Ostriker from Locked On Ravens, kind of taking us through what happened in that game and, and where the Ravens particularly struggled. And what the Dolphins did so effectively was go heavy blitz pressure on Lamar Jackson. And it didn't really leave him much room to work. He didn't have time to let plays develop or to stay in the pocket. And because there was so much blitz pressure coming, he couldn't necessarily scramble out of it on his own and, and you know, just elude all that pressure because there would be free rushers or certainly collapsing pocket, making things difficult for him to have that space to move. And so what the Ravens really failed to do was, well, I mean, adjust, but specifically in adjusting, you know, giving him hot routes to throw to and having quicker developing passes for receivers to be open. There would be plays where like receivers are, aren't even in their breaks, you know, a couple of seconds into the play. And, you know, what the Dolphins were doing weren't giving the Ravens enough time for those types of plays to develop downfield. And I think then also if you're the bears trying to replicate that, yes, you, you go heavier on the pressure and heavier on the blitz without completely abandoning everything you might normally do as, as defensive coordinator, Sean Desai. But I think blitzing them also then takes away some of the explosive passing game that they're looking to get, especially with some of the speed that they have at wide receiver. It's not so much guys that are making a, I mean, they, they've got speed, but it's more like pre-catch speed. They're guys that can get vertically with Sammy Watkins and Marquise Brown. He's like, yes, they can make guys miss after the catch, but they want to be open deep downfield. And then Rashad Bateman has been kind of really playing well for them since returning from injury and living up to some of those rookie expectations as a guy we were talking a lot about in the pre- that pre-draft process as a potential target for the Chicago Bears had they not traded up for Justin Fields. And so... Presumably the Ravens are going to adjust based on what they did or didn't do, I guess, against the Miami Dolphins and try and have some of those other options available for Lamar Jackson if they do face the blitz. And so stepping up and making tackles is going to be of the utmost important, not only on the playmate, like on the receivers that Lamar Jackson throws to, but like tackling Lamar Jackson itself or himself, right? I mean, he is difficult to tackle and there's no 
magic formula for tackling an elusive dynamic playmaker at the quarterback spot. There's not, if there was an easy answer for tackling him better, every team would do it. And we've certainly seen tackling be a challenge for the bears at times this season. And so uh, I really want to, I really want to see this defense focus on wrapping up and also like contain having responsibilities to get outside and not let him get to the sideline and kind of break the outside of your defense, funnel him back to the middle of the field where more of your defenders are to help in that tackling process. Cause it's pretty well going to take more than one guy. It's why I don't feel like just going to the QB spy option for a whole game is re- necessarily the best strategy. It, it's part of the equation. Some plays you want to go in with the quarterback spy, I think particularly in the red zone where his legs can be a dangerous weapon. And then, you know, in certain passing situations where, you know, the scrambling can be the difference between a first down and a fourth down, you, you know, you drop that linebacker to just follow Lamar Jackson, but even just a spy isn't always going to be able to bring him down or isn't always going to be able to have the perfect angle to get to the quarterback. And more importantly, it takes something else out of coverage. It takes a player who might occupy a zone or man to man coverage and forces him to just watch the quarterback. So you're either losing a pass rusher or losing a spot in coverage. And there's, there's some potential vulnerabilities there. So you mix it in every once in a while, but if you do it all the time, the Ravens are going to expect it and and find ways to counter it and kind of know what to expect throughout the game as it sort of develops. So I'm, 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 I'm most focused on throwing different ways to sort of contain Lamar Jackson. Cause I would be much, much happier, you know, trying to force, Devonta Freeman and Latavius Murray to be the ones that beat you in this Ravens offense. They haven't been running particularly well, even though they have some name recognition as, you know, veterans who've had some fantasy football relevant seasons before. It's, they're not they're not running particularly well for Lamar, for the Ravens. It's been mostly the Lamar Jackson rushing offense. And so if I can kind of force them to have to be the guys that make the plays to beat me, I will prefer that over the MVP quarterback every single day. That's That's sort of where I'm looking to try and, and neutralize what the Ravens would do. Again, it's not a, it's, there's not a magic formula. And if it was as easy to do on paper, every team would do it. But that's sort of the, the game plan that I would go into this game trying to trying to slow down this Ravens offense that has largely played well even outside of the, the Dolphins game last week. But I, I think we'll see the Ravens defense just more naturally try and do some similar things to Justin Fields. We'll look at what Fields can do and kind of look at then taking a, a – tip from what the Ravens were unable to do and how the Bears can kind of apply that to their own offense next on Locked On Bears. Hey, Bears fans, you all need to check out an incredible new app. It's for anybody who fills their car or any vehicle, I guess, with gasoline. It's called Get Upside. And listeners, this podcast are getting... 25 cents per gallon cash back every time you fill up the tank. So you no longer have to pay full price at the pump anymore, especially with gas prices high and done some kind of weird fluctuating over the last couple of seasons with everything else going on in the world. You can take some of the worry out of that a little bit with get upside, giving you that cash back. It's super easy. And some people who drive a lot are making as much as two to $300 a month in cash back. And there's no catch. The cash back gets added right into your Get Upside account, and then you can cash out at any time. You can connect your bank account for that direct deposit. If you'd rather go through PayPal, if you feel more comfortable that way, not a problem. Or even cashing out straight into like e-gift cards for Amazon or other retailers, that's fine too. You just download the Get Upside app. After you download it, enter in our promo code TOUCHDOWN, and you're going to receive a bonus, $0.25 cents per gallon cash back on top of the up to 25 cents, giving you up to 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first deposit when you down or on your first tank, your first fill up when you download the Get Upside app and enter our promo code touchdown. The Chicago Bears definitely need more touchdowns against the Baltimore Ravens and uh there, we kind of know some of what to expect against defensive coordinator Wink Martindale. He's known as being that heavier blitzing, high pressure defense. They bring pass rushers from all over. They're quite creative in their fronts on the line of scrimmage. So they'll put a lot of guys up there and they'll move all their guys around. And it's not really clear always who is going to come from where, but you can expect 
extra guys to be coming quite a bit more so than many other teams in the NFL. And that's a common strategy against rookie quarterbacks in general. The Ravens do it against anybody, but it's a strategy we've seen other teams try and deploy against Justin Fields. Try and confuse a, a first-year quarterback and try and make things, you know, not, not give him clean pockets and time to throw to, to let plays develop downfield. So in response to that, I'm looking to do what the Baltimore Ravens did not do in their game against the Miami Dolphins. And that is certainly giving your quarterback hot reads, more quick options. It's not that you have to go into every play and you don't want to go into every play always like saying, hey, you have to get rid of it in two seconds, right? Like making them all the Matt Nagy special quick passing, you know, the, the slant flats, the curl flats, double slants, you know, China seven, you don't want you don't want every play to be only quick passes, but you want every play to have a quick pass option if the blitz comes. So I think that will limit some of the play action and some of the max protection shots. Those just aren't as effective when the team is going to overload blitz you. Like the point of going to the max protect, right? With say you leave a tight end and two running backs in the block. The idea is to give you an advantage in the blocking versus the pass. So you can get more double teams, fewer one-on-ones and have a cleaner pocket for longer for your quarterback. But if you're going to the max protect and they're blitzing as many guys as you're blocking, it's not as likely to hold up for as long to let those longer plays develop and max protect plays don't come with those hot reads. So you're, you're not going to let, you're not going to be able to always let as many of those plays kind of develop downfield. And so you need to have, one of the running backs flaring out or a tight end of the flat or something somewhere on every single play, Justin Fields has to have an option for him to throw it to quickly. If the blitz comes, because maybe the Ravens will show it sometimes and then not blitz. And you don't want to have to only have quick passing options throughout your whole game plan. Just, but you do need to have a quick passing option pretty much at all times. And so then for Justin Fields, it becomes, you know, about winning pre-snap. If it's going to be a quicker offense overall, then you have to look and find where the space is defensively or where it will be after the snap based on what you're seeing pre-snap. So, you know, if you're if you're under center or in the shotgun or whatever, and you see you got a wide receiver with off coverage, you know, you throw that quick underneath. There's going to be free space there. And you might have to take your three to four yards, but you'll accept that, you know, if if the blitz is coming. Or, you know, if if they're going to blitz and press. So all the corners are up on your receivers a lot of open space then behind them. And, you know, you can throw that, that deeper, that, that quick, deep shot, right? And it's, it, so much of this is going to be predicated on your wide receivers winning their releases off the line of scrimmage. It's, you know, beat your guy right away and then throw the shot over top. So it's a downfield pass, but you're not holding onto the ball for three seconds to wait for your receiver to run his route and get open downfield. It's that quick shot with, you know, the slot fade to Allen Robinson that we saw Justin Fields hit a couple of weeks ago, right? Those types of plays where it's not long developing, but it is long distance going through the air to open things up. So they can't just, you know, collapse and be aggressive on everything underneath. Find where the space is going to be and put the ball there. It also is going to require your running backs to make guys miss after the catch. Your wide receivers too, but especially your running backs. If you're going to dump it off to the to David Montgomery, maybe in the backfield is where he's going to catch it on those hot reads against the blitz. Make the first guy miss create yards after catch, help your quarterback. The coaching staff has to help the quarterback as well. That means, you know, trying to move the pocket away from the blitz when possible. I mean, there's a risk there of like moving. If you roll out Justin Fields into the face of the blitz, he's going to get lit up. There's going to be mistakes. We saw it happen with TJ Watt against the Steelers two weeks ago, right? You have to be strategic and have, have different options in there for your quarterback if you can kind of get a sense of, where the blitz might be coming from. But I also think then the running game, if done effectively, can deter some blitzing, right? If you if you hand the ball off right into aggressive run blitzing linebackers, running game's not going to work so well. But if they're crowding the line of scrimmage and you can break through that line of scrimmage, there's not going to be as many or any second level defenders there. And maybe you can get, you know, a quick double team or a pull from the backs on the front side something there to find that little crease for the running back to break through. And if, they, if they're too aggressive on the line of scrimmage and don't have back end defenders, there's an opportunity there for the running game to slip free and then deter them from blitzing more so in the game. Easier said than done, but there are some opportunities there. I do think 
the balance you can strike is getting into the run pass option game, which is going to be different than the read option game, right? I think read options in this game are going to take too long to, you know, because you have that mesh point of quarterback and running back and who's going to, who's going to keep it, who's going to not. And then the running play really goes blitzes can then kind of get home. But if you're running the run pass option where Lamar can read the blitz and, you know, if this linebacker blitzes, I'm going to throw the slant behind him on the wide receiver. And if that linebacker stays home, I'm going to hand it off. I think RPOs can be a, a pretty effective method at giving fields an easier time of reading the blitzes that they may bring against him. You, you, have, you have to be kind of careful on what types of RPOs, how long they're going to be developing and, and what Justin Fields' read is going to be because maybe he's reading that linebacker, but the cornerback is blitzing. And so the linebacker says the linebacker stays back in coverage, which tells you to hand off, but the cornerback blitzes and is there to tackle the running back. Right? You have to sort of you have to have options there because maybe maybe you're reading the linebacker and then you have a screen off of the slant too, right? Maybe you have some different options there for Lamar to pull it or for for Justin to pull it and maybe keep it as the runner or keep it as the passer. There's there's some different options there to kind of spice spruce things up. Take advantage of the Ravens' own aggressiveness. That's really the key here to make things easier on Justin Fields. And you take advantage of that with the running game, with you know quick passing, with some deep shots in there, and always just kind of have some different options available for you. Easier said than done. We can do it on paper all day, but executing it has certainly been a, a challenge for the Bears' offense this season. But I think there's a few matchups in particular that are going to determine – how well the Bears are able to do so on that side of the ball and how well they're going to be able to get after Lamar Jackson and kind of slow down the Ravens offense. We will go through those matchups in depth next on Locked on Bears. If you haven't tried a Built Bar by now, you are missing out because it is the world's best tasting protein bar, in part because it doesn't taste like other protein bars. You know, the other bars tend to be kind of chalky or waxy or kind of have that protein powdery taste. It's just hard to kind of choke down. But built bars taste like candy bars. They're soft, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. When you bite into it, you know you're tasting something different. It's it's really a treat every day for me. I, I kind of limit myself to one a day. Otherwise, I'm gonna go through my box way, way, way too fast. Because they're low cal, they're low calorie, low sugar, high fiber, high protein. There's nothing else on the market that has this much flavor with those great nutrient contents. All the healthy benefits on top of being so delicious. Nothing else can top it. Head on over to Built.com and use our promo code LOCKED15 and you're going to get 15% off your next order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. We've been keeping a close eye on the spread for Bears Ravens at betonline.ag. And it's holding steady right now at Bears plus four and a half. So the underdogs at home, but less than a touchdown underdog is where those odds stand. Moneyline has Bears plus 190 if you want to go for the upset straight ahead. And then the over-under is shifted down slightly to 44 is your point total in this matchup. All of those odds from our friends at betonline.ag, the number one sports book we recommend, the number one place for all of your pro football betting, plus college football, basketball, soccer, hockey, tennis, boxing, even online Vegas casino games. So don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers they have available here in the heart of the football season, the beginning of the basketball season, and so much more. Sign up today for a free account. Enter our promo code Locked On. And you're going to receive your a free 50% welcome bonus on your first. Bring you free extra money to play with and win big at Bet Online, where the game starts. This game starts for me with where the Ravens are going to want to move the ball through the air. Because we kind of talked about it. You know, they're running backs. They've had injuries at running backs. And so they're on veterans that they've pulled in off the street. And I would rather let them kind of beat me in the ground game because otherwise it's going to be Lamar Jackson. But in the passing game, Tight end has always been a, a featured part of this Ravens offense under Greg Roman. And really this season, Mark Andrews has kind of been the go-to weapon over the middle for Lamar Jackson, especially if you know they try and get rid of the ball more quickly against the potential Bears blitz. I think the tight end safety blanket thing is definitely going to be a role here for both offenses. And we'll get more into that in just a second. But I, I, I have concern about Mark Andrews with the Bears against Danny Trevathan or Alec Ogletree. Roquan Smith, 
it hasn't been as stellar lately, but I think he can keep up with Mark Andrews just fine. He's, he struggled more in the running game than the passing game, and I'm okay. I'm I'm more okay with that matchup. But Ogletree has been bad. Trevathan was felt better against the Steelers. He, he was starting to settle in a little bit more, and maybe he's a little bit fresher off of the bye week here, perhaps. But that still seems like an advantage matchup for the Ravens, where them attacking the middle of the field against the Bears linebackers and even the safeties, Eddie Jackson or or Tashawn Gibson, depending on how, how, what the Injury status is I, I kind of trust DeAndre Houston Carson almost the most out of anyone in that group. Regardless, stay tight on Mark Andrews. He's going to win some contested catches, but try and get in there, break up some passes. Don't give him free releases. Don't let him run free right up the middle of the field and carve up the middle of your defense to then try and create more space outside for some of the other wide receivers to go vertical. Uh, I definitely have some some very real concerns there about Mark Andrews. The, on the other, but alternatively, if I'm looking at where uh, I want to attack. Lamar Jackson and really this Ravens offensive line. I, I'm not sure what to fully expect from them at their right tackle position due to injuries. It sounds like Patrick McCarry is probably going to return. I think he's been limited in practice this week because last week it was Tyree Phillips and he was bad. He was pretty brutal at right tackle. And so if it's Tyree Phillips, go all day, all day there with Travis Gibson, presumably going to start again for Khalil Mack. The Bears just signed Bruce Irvin. We didn't really have a, a podcast opportunity here to go super in-depth on Bruce. He missed most of last season with a torn ACL, but two years ago he had played at a, a decently high level. I think it's a solid signing as a rotational guy in this edge rusher group. Maybe a sign of less snaps for Travis Gibson coming and a sign of concern about Khalil Mack's injury status. I think it pretty well cements that he's not going to play in this game at the very least, but Irvin's a, a, an experienced veteran who I'm excited to sort of see in here. So whether it's Irvin or Travis Gibson, whoever is opposite Ro, uh, Robert Quinn, who tends to line up more against the left tackle, I am going after that right tackle as much as I can, whether it's the injured guy who might not be 100% or the backup who really played poorly and has played poorly kind of throughout this season. So th those spots, I think, are where I'm I'm seeing this, this Ravens offense be particularly decisive and where they're weak and where they're strong. And as I was kind of going through it on the other side of the ball for the bears, same positions just flipped. So I want to see Cole Komet pick up where he left off against the Steelers career high game and go beat Patrick queen, the former LSU linebacker for the Ravens. He is, he's fast. He's he's, you're not going to have Cole Komet running away from Patrick queen, but he's not so physical. And I want my big body Notre Dame tight end to win those tough catches against Patrick Queen in coverage. Again, it's not about separating. It's just about having enough of a window to fit the ball in there, you know, up, up here where Cole Komet can reach it and Patrick Queen cannot, and then just be bigger and stronger than him because he definitely is bigger and stronger. So go out there and play like it, prove it again, and keep picking up on a lot of what you were able to do last week against the Steelers because, like we talked about with Mark Andrews, if they're going to blitz – Justin Fields, which I'm expecting more blitzing of fields than the Bears blitzing of Lamar Jackson. That safety blanket tight end over the middle of the field, you know, just the quick, whether it's a quick curl, quick drag, quick up the seam, something that tight end over the middle is going to be a, a potential safety blanket there for Justin Fields on top of other potential options there. But I want to see a more dynamic middle of the field offense, maybe filling where some of those blitzers may be leaving potential space for guys to have to kind of get over to the tight end there. So Cole Komet, I'm definitely signaling. But then, you know, with this Ravens pass rush against this Bears offensive line, I still think the weak link might be the center, Sam Mustafa, but I'm more concerned about Larry Borum at the right tackle spot versus a veteran like Justin Houston or even Tyus Bowser. They've That's been where the strength has been more so for this Ravens pass rush is the edge rushers. They bounce them around to left and right side and Clias Campbell on the defensive line. They, they don't really pick sides. It's not like, you know, always over the left tackle or always over the right tackle. It's almost 50-50 for all those guys, how much they move around to each side. So it's not so much exactly a, this pass rusher versus Larry Borum, but you know, helping out those tackles. I think that's just PTSD from the Browns game. It's easier to help out on the interior. Sometimes the tackles can get left out on a limb a little bit more. And if it's Jason Peters or Larry Borum, if I'm the Ravens, I'm attacking the rookie fifth-round pick, Larry Borum. Borum has played well for a fifth-round pick. I've mean, been encouraged by what he's done, and I think he's validated some of the Bears' confidence in him, but he is still a rookie, does still make rookie mistakes, and is still going to be the potential target of the Ravens' defense. So if, if the things can hold up on the Bears' offensive line, Justin Fields can kind of get things going to Cole Komet. I think that can be a, a game-deciding matchup in both areas for the Bears, but if offensive line can't hold up, Cole Komet can't make those catches or whatever, and, and playmakers are not able to make plays after the catch and make guys miss, that's where I think the Chicago Bears have the potential of falling. I think it's 
it is there there is a path here to a Bears upset. It's a six and three Ravens team. They're a good team. The Bears are not expected to win. I'm not expecting the Bears to win, but you can kind of see, you know, so, some proper defensive blitzing and then some proper counter to the Ravens blitzing. And all of a sudden you can find a, a, a way here where Justin Fields, maybe that late touchdown drive is enough this week as opposed to not being enough because of the defense last week against the Steelers. Excited to see how this game plays out. You can be sure we'll break it all down for you on Monday right here in the Lockdown Bears podcast. So subscribe on however you're listening or watching right now. That's going to be the best way to keep up with all of our daily in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. Thanks for making Locked On Bears your first listen today and every day. We're here for you five days a week. If you're looking for your second listen, don't forget to check out our Locked On Bets sports betting podcast. They've been hot. Lee and your boy Q getting you all the best odds across all of sports. And he gives these locks of the week, his upset alerts, and so much more. So check out Locked On Bets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are Chicago Bears every day here on Locked On Bears. And I hope that makes it easier for you to bear down.